Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. At first, I was concerned when I saw that uh, Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh were trending. I thought, oh boy, what kind of horrible thing have they done now? But instead, it was about a bunch of angry conservatives being mad that they sided with the liberal justices of the U.S. Supreme Court and agreed to not block a apparent, you know, law that Maine proposed, which would have prevented uh, people from setting religious reasons for, um, or a faith-based exemption, I think is the term that they used, they would not be able to use that to reject getting vaccinated. And, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah, they're in the right here. <laughs> Typically, Faith-based exemptions rely on an individual aspect as well as something that's not seen as potentially being at risk to the public or to society. For example, here in Canada, we've had famous examples in the past where, oh, geez, the Sikhs are trying to destroy the country by wearing turbans instead of the Stetson hat for the RCMP or whatever. And so those have been faith-based exemptions because it's considered a core tenet of their faith. And it's also considered something that is up to the individual. Someone deciding to wear a yarmulke or dress in certain traditional garb or wear a turban as per their faith, that does not endanger society or public health. And so if people wanted to try and use this terrible, absolutely goddamn pathetic excuse of, well, uh, no, it's a faith-based exemption. I should not get a vaccine. Well, have you had any other vaccines? Have you gotten a flu shot? Have you gotten immunized against tetanus? <laughs> like, it's kind of ridiculous that that would somehow lead to being a faith-based exemption. And so Barrett and Kavanaugh are absolutely right to point out that, no, you know what? That doesn't make sense. God, what kind of messed up timeline is it where I'm agreeing with these assholes? And another thing that's also kind of weird about all this is it would be one thing if they were trying to cite, you know, oh no, uh, getting vaccinated or any kind of like blood transfusion or medical help that's against our religious teachings. If you're like, I don't know, a Mennonite or like Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever, I think that's a thing that they have. But no, instead, it is about this one vaccine out of many that, of course, has been very much politicized by the right wing. And so this bothers me for two different reasons, right? The first reason being that you incredible shallow bastards, you are trying to use faith to get out of a vaccine. That is just it, like, even as a non-religious person, that just feels really scummy to me and just insincere. And the second reason is that again, they are trying to find any reason they can, including calling upon religion to prevent getting a vaccine, which again, in terms of the broader argument of, well, let's evaluate what a faith-based exemption is with regards to how that affects an individual versus society. I'm pretty sure if I decided to start a religion that said, I need to be allowed to carry a block of radioactive substance around my neck, pretty sure that wouldn't fly because that's a risk to other people, not just myself. It is so wild that these people still can't seem to figure out that public health and safety are a thing. And, you know, to quote the Joker memes, we live in a society. Your freedom to swing your fist ends when it hits my face, etc., etc. But there's another part to this that to me is rather concerning and rings true of something that was said by, I think, David from many years ago at this point. Lots of conservatives and the mega crowd are very mad at Justices Barrett and Kavanaugh because, hey, come on, Trump appointed you and like what the, the you should be doing things that are on our side all the time. And no doubt they are going to do much of that. They already have done a fair chunk of that. But it's kind of this really telling and terrifying aspect that people feel like they should be beholden to Trump. And there are people saying that they aren't even conservative anymore, which I mean, no, trust me, these jackasses still are conservative. But a lot of these people, with how they're talking about these two justices right now, because of this decision with this 
main law that, you know, they blocked hearing. This is a very clear sign that uh, a lot of these people don't actually care about the Supreme Court. They just care about winning. And this is where that David Frum quote comes in. He said many years ago that if conservatives find they can no longer win democratically, they won't abandon conservatism. Instead, they will reject democracy. And, you know, I feel like over the past four or five years, we've seen very clear evidence that that's where things are headed. It seems that conservatives are at this point where anyone who disagrees with me is wrong and an enemy of the state, which is very dangerous thinking. And unfortunately, it has been so incredibly normalized by not just, you know, certain communities or certain states. We're talking entire political structures here at this point that have said, such as, you know, the GOP and again, to a certain extent, in certain cases, the Supreme Court of the United States, they have said and just given signal as much that, oh, yeah, no, we're totally on side with this, and these people are totally right and rational actors, so long as they decide to keep voting for me. That's basically what this all boils down to. So between the GOP, Fox News, and just the terribleness that is the internet, all these factors and more have led to this group of people on the right feeling that uh, anyone who disagrees with them is a problem, an enemy of the state, they get the wall, they're not good Christians, they're not true conservatives, etc., etc. There's always a justification for why we're actually totally right, everyone else is completely wrong. And if they challenge us on that, well, that's a problem and we need to use violence to solve that. Am I right, patriots? I know it's fun to kind of stop for a moment and point fingers and go, ha ha, but let's take a moment and really analyze what these people are saying, both in the overt and in the covert way, they're signaling that they don't actually fundamentally believe in democracy and anyone who disagrees with them is against their values and their principles, which are good and righteous. And that's why they can never possibly be wrong. This is all a recipe for a goddamn disaster and not enough of us are talking about it. It has just been made absolutely painfully clear that a great many, quote, conservatives don't actually believe in democracy and the rule of law. And that should concern all of us and is definitely what's bothering me today.